All right, guys. So I briefly touched on my rear brakes in the last video. And I've had a lot of... I put up a picture on my Instagram as well. I've had a lot of questions from people asking me, A, where to get the brackets, and B, what the hell am I doing? I am running stock SN95 brakes on my rear end that has 9-inch big bearing ends. I actually have the Strange H1137A 9-inch ends. Now, apparently you can get strange 9-inch ends that have an 8.8 .8 bolt pattern. I haven't looked into it at all. I have zero info on it other than that. I don't know if it's the same size bearing and the holes are just a little different. I don't know anything. So if you want to figure that out, that's going to be on your own. I didn't know anything about it. So I got your typical big bearing, late model, Torino, or whatever they're called. And I already told you the part number, straight from Strange. And now that poses a big problem because either A, you got to buy aftermarket race brakes, Aerospace, Will Wood, Strange, Bayer, 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 however you pronounce it, any of those companies for this, and they'll provide you with all the brackets. Well, I don't feel like spending $700 on race brakes for the back and that's one of the reasons why I don't want race brakes in the back two this is a street car it's gonna see a lot of miles and I don't want brakes on there that are good for 500 miles and you warp the rotors or chew up the pads now a couple of the companies do make a street kit for the back I know aerospace does I think Willwood does. I don't know if Strange does. I haven't really looked. But I already had all the SN95 brakes. So this is a cheap setup for me to get brakes on the car and get the car going. I can always upgrade the brakes later. That will be a winter project. And it's either going to be... Uh, it'll probably be Aerospace 4-Piston Street Kit. I don't have front brakes. Well, I didn't get them when I got this car. It's got SN95 spindles on it. And I'm going to bite the bullet and buy Aerospace uh, four-piston street brakes for the front. How do you put SN95 brakes, disc brakes, on an 8.8 with 9-inch ends? Great question, and I got the answer for you right now. This is everything you'll need to put the discs on the nine inch ends. You got your stock calipers. I mean, these things are heavy. That's why people get rid of them. I've completely torn these down. Uh, I've rebuilt them. These were kind of a pain to rebuild, but they weren't too shabby. I pray they don't leak when I put them, <laughs> when I put fluid in them, but they shouldn't. So these are brand new. These are brand new. Um, I got stock rotors. Uh, this one's been cut. It wasn't cut good. I've painted, I've sanded it and painted them black because they were rusty from sitting on the car. This one hasn't even been cut yet. Um, you got to get your retainer plates from Strange. I mine didn't come with my axle, and I can't remember if I told Brad at Wagon Wheel not to get them or what. I don't, I don't remember. But these are the retainer plates from Strange. They just came in the mail today from Summit. Uh, part number STR-A as an Apple 1018. Late big Ford retainer plates. So you need these. You probably get them with your axles. Make sure you get them with your axles or else you're ordering them later than, than me. So I had a slight problem. And uh, I'll show you. Now, here's uh, the big part of this kit. These are um, I think they're laser cut gotta be quarter inch thick steel brackets that bolt the uh, stock calipers onto the 9 inch ends and he also provides the backing plate for it so this sandwiches each side of the uh, 9 inch end it also comes with four washers which I believe is for behind the caliper and the bracket to get the right spacing and uh, I got these from a gentleman named Chris Neighbors. 
He's a uh, one-man show. I think he does this on the side. I'm going to put his uh, info in the description of where you can get these. These are nice brackets. I probably am going to have these powder coated as they're bare steel and I don't want them to rust along with these plates. So I don't want them to rust up and look all nasty because now I am getting my rear end powder coated. I got a plug for a guy who's going to do it cheap for me. So I'll probably have these just powder coated. I don't know. We'll see what color these get powder coated. It'll be a surprise for me. So these are really nice brackets. They're very well done. I, I don't know what these are for. These three points. I'm assuming they're for a dust shield. Because they're threaded. I, I obviously don't need those. But I'll just leave them anyway. Who knows. I might need them for something one day. So you get these brackets. You get two brackets. You get two backing plates. You get four washers. Now if you already have your axles assembled. You'll know this isn't going to work out. So you're going to have to cut it like that. Just cut the bottom out. No big deal. I actually have to trace it onto the other one and cut it out. So we're going to cut that now. Oh, I, so if you got the 5.8 studs like I did, your uh, brake rotors obviously aren't going to fit. This is a 5.8 drill bit. It just It's not big enough. Now the problem is those lug nuts are shanked and the shank is 11 sixteenths. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to drill these rotors out. Now I advise you start with 5 eighths and then jump to 11 sixteenths. Now the 11 sixteenths bit I couldn't find anywhere locally. I tried Home Depot, I tried Lowe's, uh, Harbor Freight, Fastenal, nobody had this local. I texted my Snap-on guy, he didn't even have one. Macro guy didn't have one. So I told the Snap-on guy to order it for me. So he got me my 11 sixteenths drill bit today. That is one expensive ass drill bit. I think it was like $64 for this drill bit. But what am I gonna do? I couldn't, I couldn't find one anywhere else. And you gotta drill these rotor hats, which are probably a quarter inch thick, if not a little more and you gotta fit these over those lugs. So, let's drill a rotor, let's cut a backing plate, and uh, figure assembling this all out on the axle. That work for you? you have your rotors drilled, your backing plates cut, all your hardware, you can go about assembling this. Now I, I was questioned a little bit when I started doing this because this axle seal sticks out kind of far. Let's see if I can get you a decent shot in there. So you can see that axle seal sticks out kind of far. Now, I've never done this before. I didn't know what to think. So I got these, stick them in there, and it goes around that. And I'm like, well, that's not gonna work because it's not gonna hold my axle in. And that's when I found out about the retainer plates. So you got your brake backing plate. You got your axle retaining plate. So you're gonna wanna slide that one in there over the seal. That one goes in next. That one sisters up to it. Now it's not, you know, going to touch because you got to tighten it down. It's going to pull it in. My rear end isn't completely assembled. I still need a couple other parts. So this is just pretty much all mock-up. Now you're going to take this bracket. Let me try to zoom back out here. You're going to take this bracket 
And obviously your caliper faces the backside. You slide it over the tube and up onto the thing like this. All right. The only thing I don't like is that these holes are so close to this housing end here. I actually might take my deburring bit and open this up a little bit because I don't think I, I don't think my washer fits. Yeah, so I might I might hit these housing ends a little. These are three eighths holes through here. Uh, more than likely, it should be a hardened grade eight bolt. I do not have any right now, but. I will be going out to get them. I'll probably get ARP. It's make sure you get the hole drilled into uh, your axle flange like this or else see the hole or else you'll be doing this whole thing with a wrench instead of a socket and a gun like I can do because you can go right through to it These are metrics. These are just what I had laying around. These aren't right, <laughs> obviously. This is just for mock-up. So there that is, bolted it up. That axle is not coming out now. Obviously, this, like I said, this is all mock-up. I wanted to put on another video, guys, to show you. Just because so many guys had questions on it. So there's that. That's the whole brake bracket setup. You got your retainer plate in there. You got your backing plate. So now it's all, obviously that's not up. It's not the right bolt. But you can see it sandwiches it all together. Now on the back side, like I was showing you, that's really close to the uh, housing end. I might take the burr burning bit and just take a little off. You got your rotor all drilled out. Give it a little shimmy on. Great. Now you you don't have any things. So grab two of your uh, axle spacers or your wheel spacers. Tie that down to hold your rotor. Now, one thing I did have to do. Oh, wrong caliper. I had to grind on the caliper bracket a little bit. Nothing crazy. You can see it's not too much. Just a little bit. It hits the uh, backing plate. So, nothing crazy. on the uh, strange retainer plate now. Definitely need some more lighting over this bench. There is not enough here. If you don't have these, you need to pick these things up. These are the best goddamn tools I have. I love these things. I got like seven or eight different sizes, shapes for steel, and I got a couple for aluminum. Do not use these finer ones on aluminum. Aluminum has a bigger flute, flute channel, whatever cutter on it, so it doesn't get all gummed up. If you use this on aluminum, you will gum it up in seconds. 
but quick work you can see how nice and smooth that is right there definitely right those uh, washers are needed between the caliper and the caliper bracket I can see right here there's a perfect amount on each side and if they weren't there it'd be sucked up against the rotor now there's no brake pads in here obviously um, I still haven't bought them I gotta buy them it's one of the many things this is just Running on my caliper. Well, there you go. Now you can take the time if you don't have it. I'm going to weld the tab somewhere in this area for a brake line because I'm going to hard line to here and then soft line out to the caliper. Um, Got to figure that out. I said uh, finishing lines is going to help me with all my soft lines. So I might get green brake lines, who knows, we'll see. That is a very quick and easy job to do. That wasn't hard at all. I mean, the hardest part was trying to find a 11 16th drill bit, which I'm gonna tell you, not many drill bits have, uh, drill bit kits have it. No stores had it for me, so I had to order it. But drilling the rotor took the longest out of any of this. <laughs> so I hope you got some good tips. I'm going to leave Chris's information in the description. I think the bracket and the backing plate was like $70 to my door. There's only one company out there that I was able to find that makes those brackets, and it's North Race Cars, and they charge $200 for that. I don't know why. I don't... I don't want to know why. $70 is much better. All right, you got to get down. You're killing me with your feet. So I'm into this $70, mainly because the rear end that was in the car had all the SN95 brakes on it. Now, if you go this route and you have to buy everything, you got to buy the calipers, you got to buy the rotors, you got to buy the brake pads, you got to buy the brackets. It might not be as worth it to you. I think these calipers, for a good rebuild, rebuilt, um, new, not talking junkyard prices or you're from your brother's friend's mother, were like 60 or $70 a piece. Rotors are, for stockers, 40 Give me a minute. It's been like it was like six months ago. I priced this out, forty-five dollars a piece, and for a decent set of brake pads was ninety dollars, and then seventy dollars for the brackets. So I mean, if you're gonna be into that three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars, I would not be putting stock brakes on the car. At that point, I'd save up the other two hundred dollars, and I would just buy aerospace street brakes. Like always, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I hope I helped some of you out with your brake dilemma. I know it took me a lot of research just to find the North Race Cars bracket and see what people were doing. And then thank God for a buddy to give me the Chris's information because he did the same setup in his car. I hope you guys get out into the garage, pick up a cold one, pick up a wrench, and keep working on that hot rod. Have a good night, guys.